Hey guys, welcome to the Liberal Hive Mind, a channel solely focused on exposing the abundant hypocrisy of the left. Who thought state media was a good idea? I mean, seriously. The United States was founded on the belief of giving power to the individual, separations of power, you know, keeping a government in check and making sure that government can't get too big or too powerful, a system built to prevent top-down fascism. But then for some reason in the early 1970s, NPR was founded. I'd argue against the founding ideals of the nation. Very weird to say the least, especially considering it happened during the midst of the Cold War. Back then, America's biggest enemy was the Soviet Union, but more importantly, the evident threat of the rise of communism. And during that time, America saw fit to create a communist-style, centralized, government-funded media outlet. In other words, state media. NPR was founded. And again, the question is, who thought this was a good idea? There would only ever be one possible path for NPR to follow, and that is a path of left-wing bias and corruption, doing the bidding of the left-wing activists and communist revolutionaries who have infiltrated the government. And lo and behold, fast forward to 2024, that's exactly what's happened. NPR is a national disgrace and should be defunded immediately. It should have been defunded back in the 1970s. NPR has been fully exposed as in the pocket for the DNC, as nothing but a taxpayer-funded left-wing propaganda outlet. I know, totally shocking story. Stuff. Let me show you guys exactly what's going on. We got some stuff to get into, so let's roll the tape. All right, so what's going on at NPR? Well, one of the top senior editors at the outlet was recently suspended after serving 25 years and sharing concerns about bias in the free press. With declining ratings, sorry levels of trust, and an audience that has become less diverse over time, the trajectory for NPR is not promising. Two paths seem clear. We can keep doing what we're doing and hoping that it will all work out, or we could start over with the basic building blocks of journalism. We can face up to where we've gone wrong. News organizations don't go in for that kind of reckoning, but there's a good reason for NPR to be the first. We're the ones with the word public in our name. And of course, as you'd expect in Woke World 2024, well, the leftist running NPR immediately proved him right because they suspended him after his public critique. You have an actual independent journalist who blows the whistle, saying that NPR has a bias problem, and what do they do? They immediately suspend him. And why do you think they're suspending him? Well, because he's telling the truth, that's why. As we've learned in the past couple of days, thanks to NPR's new CEO, a woman by the name of Catherine Mayer, well, those in charge at the network find the truth to be an outdated concept. But what about the hard things, the places where we are prone to disagreement, say politics and religion? Well, as it turns out, not only does Wikipedia's model work there, it actually works really well. Because in our normal lives, these contentious conversations tend to erupt over disagreement about what the truth actually is. But the people who write these articles, they're not focused on the truth. They're focused on something else which is the best of what we can know right now. And after seven years of working with these brilliant folks, I've come to believe that they are onto something, that perhaps for our most tricky disagreements, seeking the truth and seeking to convince others of the truth might not be the right place to start. In fact, our reverence for the truth might be a distraction that's getting in the way of finding common ground and getting things done. The truth, I guess, is an outdated, subjective concept that gets in the way of good journalism. They continue to prove this guy's point. This is what happens when you challenge the leftist orthodoxy that runs mainstream journalism. This is what happens when you question the narrative or when you question your colleagues' practices. You get fired. We all remember what happened when Ronna McDaniel, a very, very non-threatening Republican, was hired by MSNBC so they could play political theater and pretend as if both sides are represented. There was a full-blown on-air meltdown by the network's top anchors. But that they can do that as one of us, as badge-carrying employees of NBC News. There is an easy way to avoid the controversy NBC News has stumbled into. Don't hire anyone close to the crimes. She literally backed an illegal scheme 
to steal an election in the state of Michigan. That is the type of experience that Ron and McDaniel brings to the table. And that experience does not get us to a deeper understanding of anything in the public debate. I want to associate myself with all my colleagues, both at MSNBC and at NBC News, who have voiced loud and principled objections to our company putting on the payroll someone who hasn't just attacked us as journalists, um, but someone who is part of an ongoing project to get rid of our system of government. Essentially forcing MSNBC's hand to fire her a couple days after hiring her. Well, it's pretty much the same thing at NPR. This very brave, award-winning senior editor, Mr. Early Berliner, said nothing but the truth. But the truth is so offensive to your average leftist that anybody who brings it up must be completely condemned. And that's exactly what happened. 50 NPR employees signed a letter to CEO Catherine Mayer and top editor Edith Chapin calling for, among other things, a public rebuke of the, quote, factual inaccuracies and elisions in early Berliner's Free Press essay. Essentially, it's a crybaby response, a totally garbage rebuke of sorts, that claims that he's lying. Except he isn't lying. His piece was filled with accurate, fact-based, easily fact-checked criticism. Here's a little snippet so you could get an idea. He writes, For years I have been persistent. When I believe our coverage has gone off the rails, I have written regular emails to top news leaders, sometimes even having one-on-one -on -one sessions with them. On March of 10th, 2022, I wrote to a top news executive about the numerous times that we described the controversial education bill in Florida, the parental rights and education bill, by the way, that's the real name, as the quote, don't say gay bill, when it didn't even use the word gay. I pushed to set the record straight and wrote another time to ask why we keep using the word that many Hispanics hate, Latin X. On March 31st, 2022, I was invited to a manager's meeting to present my observations. Throughout these exchanges, no one has ever trashed me. That's not the NPR way. People are polite, but nothing changes. So I've become a visible wrong thinker at the place that I love. It's uncomfortable and sometimes heartbreaking. But of course, if we go earlier to the 50 NPR employees who signed on to the letter rejecting Uri Berliner's piece, they wrote that it was filled with factual inaccuracies. I'm pretty sure what I just read is factually accurate. But of course, facts don't matter to deeply partisan left-wing fake news journalists who run the network. You know, like NPR CEO Catherine Mayer, who's pictured here on her Twitter account, writing the best part of Arizona GOTV is my Biden grandpa hat. Or more proof of bias, here she is complaining about Wikipedia being too white and white-centric during an appearance on the very left-wing Daily Show with Trevor Noah. The fact of the matter is, is that most written knowledge today has been written by white, colonial, European, North American men. You know, what about the experience of editing Wikipedia? What about the culture of Wikipedia? What about the policies of Wikipedia need to change? Because in reality, the beautiful thing about Wikipedia is it is changeable all the time. It's edited right. 350 times a minute. So if we want to change it, that's fully within our power. So yes, we are cursed with a record that is hugely biased throughout history. Here she is taking a very left-wing stance, you know, the stance that the First Amendment is a problem. The number one challenge here that we, we see and is, of course, the First Amendment in the United States pro is a fairly robust um, right, uh, protection of rights. and. And that is a protection of rights, both for platforms, which I actually think is very important that platforms have those rights to be able to regulate what kind of content they want on their sites. But it also means that it is a little bit tricky to really address some of the real challenges of where does bad information come from and sort of the influence peddlers who have made a real market economy around it. The truth of this network has been fully revealed. It is a taxpayer funded Democrat propaganda outlet. That's what it is. And if you question it, if you challenge the left wing takeover of this taxpayer network, well, you'll get suspended in a jiffy and publicly criticized by your former colleagues. There is no good argument for taxpayer dollars to be spent on another left-wing network. There's enough bias fake news networks that are privately ran. What is the purpose of a public one? The Corporation for Public Broadcasting, NPR and PBS's parent, received $525 million for fiscal year 2024. Of that, $367 million went to the public television stations, and public radio stations got $126 million. Over half a billion dollars is being spent on these networks so they can spew left-wing propaganda, push incredibly unpopular woke nonsense, 
and fire any journalist who asks any questions about the work that they're doing. Doesn't take a rocket scientist to realize that state media is communist media. I mean, what an absolutely horrible idea. Oh, well, how do you know that any government-subsidized news network is biased or will always be biased towards left-wing causes? What do you mean? Their mere existence is based on tax collection and big government, left-wing ideals. You mean to tell me that a network that gets its funding from big daddy government isn't going to be in the pocket of big daddy government Democrats? You gotta be kidding me. You gotta be smoking that Parmesan to not see the writing on the wall. NPR is a communist media tabloid, and it should be defunded immediately, purely for ethical reasons. It's an unethical, anti-American trash heap that's no different from the state propaganda outlets that we see north of the border in Canada, and frankly, no different from communist state media out of North Korea. Defund the NPR 500 million frickin' bucks, folks. What a monumental waste of hard-working taxpayer dollars. NPR has been exposed, and that's pretty much what I got for you guys. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to leave a like and possibly subscribe. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.